de GNRD Espagne. Mais avant, j'avais travaillé pendant 25 années dans la télévision valenciana, dans l'île de l'Espagne, c'est une télévision publique où je parlais surtout euh, des conflits dans des pays arabes. Moi aussi, je suis je, professeur de journalisme à euh, l'Université de Valencia. D'accord. Euh, je vais parler en anglais pour faire mon intervention. Between uh, terrorism and media, especially social media, there is a symbiotic relationship. Each exploits the other, and terrorism has no meaning without media coverage in this age of mass communication. Terrorism uses mass media for both tactical and strategical purposes. Terrorists, by definition, want attention. They commit violence acts to cause fear, terror, and disrupt normal life, all in the hope of gaining attention for a cause. Each article we write and uh, each television meal we produce as a journalist is the result of so many editorial decisions, I say even political decisions, which images should appear in print, which shouldn't, what information is relevant to this story, what should be left out, what does it even mean and why should you, the weaver or reader, care? In all reporting, context is the key. The personal profession does young gather and offer raw information. They pass <coughs> through a number of those critical questions, inject historical perspective analysis and rigorous fast checking. Italy, after all of this, out pop a polished, informative, and contextual report, but not all reporters rise to this level. For example, in an interview uh, with Vox, Obama was asked whether he thinks the media sometimes overstates the level of alarm people should have about terrorism as opposed to a longer term problem of climate change and epidemic diseases. Obama responded, absolutely. Right now, we are living in a state of balkanization of media, and that means that we just don't have a common place where we get common facts and a common worldview the way we did before some years ago. A media researcher like Hoffman asks to explain the above-mentioned symbiosis. Without the media coverage, the act's impact is arguably wasted, remaining narrowly confined to the immediate victims of the attack rather than reaching the wider target audiences at whom the terrorist violence is actually aimed. Terrorists are primarily interested in audience, not the victims, and emphasize that how the audience react is an important act as itself. Accordingly, winning the attention of the media, national and foreign publics and decision makers in a government is one of the primary goal of terrorists. Indeed, the goal of terrorists are not solely confined to winning the attention of the masses. In addition to that, through the media, they aim, they aim to publicize their political causes, inform both friends and foes about the motives for terrorist deeds, and explain their rationale for resulting the violence, as the Spurs Nakos say. They further aim to be treated like regular, accepted, legitimate world leaders, as the media give them a similar status. To illustrate this, Ayman al Sawahiri, the current leader of uh, Al Qaeda, argues that Al Qaeda is in a battle, and more than half of this battle is taking place in a battlefield of the media. Al Qaeda is in a media battle for the hearts and the minds of the Ummah, this, this uh, al Sawahiri said. Then terrorism has much in common with propaganda. Both are forms of vehicles of communication. The obvious purpose of the state terrorism is the term, uh, if the term is appropriate, is not publicity, but control of the population through intimidation. This idea for me is very important. Terrorists use online platforms. Uh, it's, not, uh, it's not new. At the events after the events of September 11, the anti-terrorist campaign had that followed. A large number of terrorist groups moved to cyberspace establishing thousands of websites that promote their message and activities. 
Many terrorist sites were targeted by intelligent and law enforcement agencies, county terrorism services and activists who monitored the sites, attacked some of them, and forced the operators to seek new online alternatives. Social media differs from traditional and conventional media in many aspects. Unlike traditional media, in which only a small cohort of established institutions disseminate information to an effective, limitless audience, social media enables anyone to publish or access information. New communication technologies, such as comparatively inexpensive and accessible mobile and web-based network, create highly interactive platforms through which individuals and communities share, concrete issues and modify contents. I'm going to try to, to, to finish my intervention, trying to make some justice uh, with the idea the media plays a central role in the calculus of political violence and that put into positions where they can, they can magnify or minimize this kind of acts. Under this slide, we can suggest th these ideas that can be implemented to minimize the media-related effects of terrorism. First of all, there is no doubt that terrorism must be reported. Accordingly, in order to alter the symbiotic relationship between terrorism and the media, it is of high importance for the media to reevaluate and change its rhetoric when covering the terrorist-related news and stories through covering those incidents just as any other history in a more responsible and less sensational manner. Achieving this may also prevent the emergence of an atmosphere of fear at the public level. The media also should have a conscious sense of its responsibilities to the public as one of the goals of the terrorists is to shake public confidence in their own security. The media coverage of success stories should be balanced. The media, very important, should differentiate between different types of terrorism and terrorist groups in order not to provoke and mobilize public against certain ethnic and or religious minorities. Finally, especially for people who are covering Middle East affairs, terrorism should be distinguished from conventional war and terrorists from soldiers. The victims of terrorism attacks are unarmored and undefended. And at that point, the journalists, the journalists will have a challenge a soldier used violence in accordance with the legally constituted authorities on its society against enemies designed by those authorities. The question is how journalists must call when soldiers from a country have the responsibility of the attacks to the civilians. The war on terror already has hold on Western political culture after 300 years debate between freedom of the individual and protection of society, the protection of society seems to be the only priority. This is the reason, in this context, the human rights can be threatened and our duty is to protect them. And this is also a journalism duty. Thank you very much.